when you look at your sales and look at how Nestle is present, how will it change how people consume? Do we want more vegan? Is it healthier things? And how much will that business grow in the next five years? Yeah. So overall, we've been very, very satisfied with our 2020 results. I think in a very challenging year, we were able to improve our organic growth 30 in a row um, and uh, reach 3.6 percent, also improved our profitability. Uh, pet food and coffee uh, were certainly two categories that were on the rise. And then underlying all of that, uh, you mentioned a trend that is key to us, and that is the trend towards uh, plant-based nutrition. Whether it's vegetarians or vegans, I think people are looking for more plant-based um, base for their nutrition. And we're catering to that in a lot of categories, um, in food, of course, but also in dairy replacement. And as you saw from our um, vegan Kit Kat offering that we announced earlier this week, also in confectionery. So this is part of our drive to offer food and beverages that are more in line with our current consumer trends and that also have better nutritionals uh, for our consumers around the world. So Mark, in four or five years, do you already have a sense of how big that category is compared to everything else? Is it you know, 30% of your sales or is it lower? Um, well, do keep in mind, we also have categories that are not um, uh, touched by this. So take coffee as an example, which is plant-based per se. Uh, so we only look at the categories uh, that are really changing from uh, animal-based proteins to plant-based. In terms of absolute numbers in the food area uh, at the present time, um, when you look at our uh, plant-based alternatives and the downstream products where we use the ingredients, we're talking about 700 million Swiss francs of sales growing at uh, double digit. Uh, we have a dairy, uh, a plant-based alternative business north of 100 million. And then, of course, now we also have ice cream and confectionery coming in. So to me, more than the absolute size, the growth rates are important. Uh, all of these growth rates are solid double digit uh, growth rates. A year into the pandemic, how do you see things developing? So we have vaccines. Are people still changing their shopping habits? I know you benefited from, you know, the sur surge and, frankly, the shortage of puppies almost worldwide. Are these trends really to stay, or do we go back to the way we were consuming pre-pandemic? Look, it's very hard to forecast with pinpoint accuracy where things are going, but I'm quite convinced that uh, once this pandemic uh, is overcome, we will not return uh, to the world of 2019. So people will enjoy more flexible uh, lifestyles when it comes to their work uh, patterns, and more remote working, which means more time at home and more in-home consumption. They will have adopted uh, more pets in this crisis, and of course, those pets are going to be with them for a number of years, and um, so that's a good trend. And then I think also this has been the period where digital shopping, online shopping, in food and beverage has been truly people have discovered this, uh, they have discovered uh, the transparency of this. And so we believe this is here to stay and, um, and if anything, will increase from here. I, I think in February last year, you said that you regretted not doing more acquisitions in 2019. Is now a good time to make acquisitions? Well, I think um, we regretted it last year and we went on to address this because 2020 was a year that saw pretty significant portfolio transformation, not just on the selling side, but this time, unlike 2019, also on the buying side. In particular, I'd like to point out Nestle Health Science, where I think we're increasingly building this business into a sizable key contributor to our overall organic growth and earnings. We're also now separating out that business when it comes to reporting. So as from uh, this quarter, we're fully uh, providing transparency in how that business performs. Going forward, um, yes, uh, we continue to be interested in acquisitions uh, to bolster our key categories. And um, we continue to see opportunities. But I also have to tell you, this is a time when you have to be selective when it comes to price expectations, uh, because when we buy something, we expect to live with, with it for a long period of time. And hence, uh, cautious buying, prudent buying, prudent capital allocation uh, is a hallmark of Nestle. So what kind of category would you be looking at, Mark Schneider? Is there, you know, is there a specific, is it you know, high margins? Is it in Europe? Or is it really the kind of product that, that you want to um, you know, increase and that you couldn't do organically that you'd be interested in buying? 
so the good thing with us is uh, we're really present in 187 markets and in more than 10 product categories. And uh, in most of those, we're completely open towards expanding. And um, so that gives us a broad angle of attack when it comes to finding acquisition targets. We are, of course, primarily interested in some of our high growth categories. So think about uh, coffee and uh, pet care, where we've done some deals last year. Um, Nestle Health Science continues to be a, a key area of interest. Um, we're also interested in expanding our waters business because after the divestitures in North America, we're interested in expanding our functional waters area and uh, premium brands. So that shows you that there's a broad spectrum here and uh, that gives us confidence that we will find targets. Yeah, and of course, the premium water brands, Pellegrino, San Pellegrino, and uh, Perrier, and the rest, or the, the U.S. water business, you sold off just a couple of days ago to private equity. Do, do you see more divestments? Is there anything that, you know, because of social distancing, because of the way we live and work, do, that, that will actually impact uh, the way we also consume either liquids or food? And, you know, what will be unloved again in the next two to three years that you would be looking possibly to sell off? Yeah. So, look, I mean, portfolio transformation continues to be part of our life. And so, obviously, lots of um, interesting opportunities for buying, but also interesting opportunities um, for um, uh, reducing our scope. But um, it's important not to be ne too negative on out of home, because while it will take two or three years, uh, we still want to be around in two or three years and be successful and growing. And um, the out of home lifestyle before this pandemic um, has been on a steady increase for several decades, um, and there's good reason to assume that we will also continue to return to out-of-home lifestyles, and hence water on the go, something that you can take with you in a container that, um, that doesn't uh, take up too much space and weight, um, I think continues to be a key need, and we will address it. Uh, address it by by doing what exactly is it you know is it part of the segment that you're looking at is it different how does it different from the US business that you sold off Well, um, so we will focus in water on the international premium brands and on functional brands, but we will continue to stay in water and expand it. And uh, we're not distracted by the fact that water, of course, in 2020 and at the present time, because of reduced uh, travel and uh, on-the-go activity, um, is temporarily impacted. You have to see through that and you have to think about the long term where people will still want to have their hydration with them and we will be there to offer that, albeit at a higher price segment in premium and, uh, and functional waters. Um, do, do you believe you're, you know, ahead of the curve in terms of corporate activism when it comes to sustainability or recycling? Are you feeling more and more pressure from both consumers and shareholders to take a step further? I don't see it as pressure. I see it as something that we strongly believe in and that we intend to lead in. Um, so um, take our uh, net zero roadmap we published last year ahead of most, most other major players in our space. It's seen now as a benchmark for how to do it right on uh, net zero conversion. Uh, we've been very proactive. I published some recent opinion pieces that shows that we see it as a value creation opportunity. We're so glad that regulators around the world, uh, that uh, shareholders around the world, and NGOs are moving in the same direction. With the U.S. rejoining the first time, you now have uh, the hopes of some regulatory conversions between North America, Europe, and Asia. Um, so I think this is a key trend, and um, the leading companies there will be rewarded, and we intend to be one of them. Mark Schneider, you're, of course, a very busy man. You have a limited you know, amount of time available in your calendar. What are the three top priorities that you're focusing on from now until the end of the year? Well, um, we have to work from the assumption that 2021 is still a year that, um, while things will be improving, it will still be severely impacted uh, by the uh, pandemic. Uh, that's a reality we have to face. And hence, our three priorities have not changed. Number one, safety uh, for our people, for our workplaces, and uh, because only with that can we live up to our commitment to employees and then to the second priority, and that is business continuity. Supply chains around the world are still under enormous stress, and that consumes a lot of time of our management team to be sure that we keep uh, all our products available. And then the third one, uh, with so many uh, communities around us hurting, providing help 
and in particular providing help in the area of vaccinations. Um, I think this will be a key part of our community support in 2021 to be sure we all have a chance to get out of this uh, terrible situation as fast as possible.